does it mean? Why is it important? And do you need to do these things? In this video, part one, I'm going to introduce the concepts of DevOps with Power BI and CICD. And then I'm going to show you how to set up a simple code repository for shared storage, versioning, and recovery. This is a minimal effort and the easiest way to manage your PBIX files. For more complex projects, you might want to use more advanced techniques. In subsequent videos, parts two, three, and four will cover those more advanced techniques and cases where you should need them. It's important to understand that there are two classes of BI projects. One of the reasons that Power BI is so successful is that it's easy to use just on the desktop, and then you can deploy your data set and your reports up to the Power BI service. That category of simple projects we're going to call small to mid-scale class projects. Typically, there's a solo developer. You can see that I'm saying solo BI developers, plural, what do I mean by that? Well, we may have one developer developing the queries and the data model, and then another developer building reports. And so we have one developer doing each of those things. Uh, in a larger project, we may have one developer creating the data model and then transitioning to another developer. So we need an easy way to be able to hand off those files and make sure that we have both disaster recovery and the ability to hand off the right version. It's a simplified solution. It's optimized for quick deployment. And we're typically going to deploy up to the service manually from Power BI Desktop. Contrast this with an enterprise class project where generally we want the ability for multiple developers to be involved in creating different objects within our queries, our data model, and our reports. And we may not be doing that today, but we want to have that capability in the future. We want to implement full scale continuous integration, continuous delivery, and our BI project may encompass developing a data warehouse or enhancing a data warehouse or data lake architecture. It's a more complex solution. It takes longer. It's a bigger investment. But along with that, we get automated deployment and support for multiple developers. So it's important to kind of understand the class of the project that you're working on to be able to apply the DevOps and CICD concepts that I'm going to talk about in the rest of this presentation. Back to small mid-scale class, typically we're using Power BI desktop development, just on your desktop computer, writing to a PBIX file, keeping it simple, that's very convenient. This is part of why Power BI is so successful is because it's an easy thing to do. But in more formal IT-driven and IT-managed solutions that fit into this enterprise class, we may need to use multiple development tools like Tabular Editor or Visual Studio. It's more complex, there's a little more work involved, but there's a little more flexibility in allowing different developers to, to work on different parts of the solution. So more flexibility, more complexity, you need to decide what class your project fits in in order to apply some of the more advanced techniques I'm going to talk about. So let's talk about why it's important. What is DevOps? DevOps comes from the software development community, and it's a set of practices, really a category of capabilities that first really applied to software development projects, but can also be applied to data warehouse and business intelligence projects if you understand the dynamics and some of the differences between those needs and capabilities. DevOps is a, a set of practices that combine software development and IT operations. And it's all about managing your source files, being able to version, share them with different developers, possibly be able to merge, split, difference those files, and then automate build processes along with testing and deployment. And again, are these important things that you need in your project? It really depends on the size and scale. What is CICD? Well, depending on your definition, CICD either stands for continuous integration, continuous delivery, or continuous deployment. Continuous integration means that as you add features, we can iteratively promote those features into another version of our solution without starting over again, so that we should be able to incrementally add features along with testing and deployment. 
Continuous delivery is when the team produces software, or a solution in this case, in short cycles at high speeds. And then continuous deployment is when new functionality is rolled out. It can be completely automated. And that may not be a capability that you need in smaller projects, but this can work in concert with agile software uh, life cycles and project management methodologies. This is the Power BI Project DevOps Maturity Pyramid. At the bottom of the pyramid, we have all Power BI projects, regardless of the duration, the size, the scale, any Power BI project that you really care about, you should be storing your project files, your PBIX file, in shared storage so that you have a recovery plan. Do not depend on downloading a PBIX file from the Power BI service to recover your project or keep track of the current version of your project. Keep your PBIX files in shared storage. And we'll talk about your options to do that. Secondly, if you're doing that, you probably have check-in and versioning capabilities. So the second rung up the maturity curve is the ability to version your files so that you can revert back to an earlier version or you can uh, roll forward and another developer could pick up the work and know what version they're working on and you have a disaster recovery plan because you're using shared storage that's not just in somebody's personal space. Moving up to the next stage, deployment, promotion, and management. Uh, this could be as simple as just deploying to a designated workspace or you can use features of Power BI Premium to manage deployment pipelines. Moving up to the next level, the ability to compare, merge, difference, and branch your work. So multiple developers could work on different components of a solution and then branch and merge their features and their work. And yes, we can do this with Power BI, cautiously I'll add. Moving up to the highest rung, and this is not a capability that's necessary in all Power BI projects, but in the most serious enterprise class IT driven projects, we can implement DevOps build automation, meaning that the entire deployment and promotion process can be automated using tools like Azure DevOps. The top two capabilities really fall into the category of CICD, which again is a subset of DevOps, really reserved for the most serious IT managed projects. Stage one, shared storage and recovery. This demonstration will show you how to create a minimal code repository so that you can share your Power BI project files with other team members version them and have a disaster recovery plan. If you don't have a formal code repository and if you're not using an advanced form of DevOps, you should be using this technique. We typically create a Teams channel to manage every one of our projects. So if you're using Teams, you simply go to your channel, go to the files area, and you can store your Power BI project files here. Typically, you'll want to create a folder with the name of the project to manage your Power BI project files. Here in this folder is where I'm going to store my PBIX files, but I'm not going to use Teams or the web browser like I'm using here to upload and download my files. I'm going to sync them with my desktop, And here you can see the local file that this library syncs to. Now, file storage in Teams is actually managed in SharePoint, and you can view this in SharePoint just by using this option. And this is the nice thing about managing files in SharePoint Online. They're automatically versioned. And so every time you save this PBIX file to your local folder, which then gets synchronized online, you can go to the version history menu option here in SharePoint, and you can see all of the versions of that file. 
So for example, if I open up this PBIX file here in Power BI Desktop from my local synced folder, and I'll just make a simple change. and then close and save the file. You can see that the file is being synchronized with SharePoint. And if we go to SharePoint and take a look at the version history again, you can see that it's actually created another version of the file. So you'll want to make sure that every day at the end of the business day, you always close your files and let that synchronization happen so that it can version your file. Another thing is that you have to keep your PBIX files small. Well, how do you do that when you're importing a lot of data? Simple. In this blog post on my blog, Developing Large Power BI Datasets, in part one, I walk through a simple method to use parameters on all of your large tables to keep your file size small by reducing the volume of data that you import into the desktop version of your PBIX file. Once you've deployed out to the service, then you can change these parameter values and increase the volume of data that you actually use in production. Those details and more are shared in the series of blog posts. Another option is to use GitHub. You can easily set up a GitHub account, either a personal account or an account that your client might use. If you go to GitHub.com using a free account, you can create a project like the one that I've done here. And then simply clone that project locally, and then you can open and manage your project with GitHub Desktop or any other tools that you may already be uh, accustomed to using. I clone the project here, and, and in this local repository, I can simply store my PBIX files, which again, I need to make sure that I keep them small using this parameter technique. Using GitHub, you can check in, check out, version, and manage all of your Power BI project files like you would any other IT project. That's it for part one. I introduced Power BI DevOps and CICD and showed you how to set up a minimal required simple code repository for shared storage, versioning, and recovery. You should always do this at minimum, even in small to mid-scale Power BI projects. If you're working on more advanced projects and you have greater needs around DevOps and CICD, be on the lookout for parts two, three and four where I'll talk about deployment and promotion management, comparing merging branching and differencing Power BI models, and then finally Power BI DevOps build automation for advanced IT driven larger scale projects. Thanks for watching.